In this video, I'm going to show you how to find the sum from 1 to n using a for loop versus using recursion. So for example, if we have the sum and we put in n is equal to 4, then it will give you number 10. And that's because 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 is equivalent to 10. Now how about the sum of n is 100? Well, that should give you 5050 because 1 plus 2 plus up until 100 is going to be equal to 5050. You might be saying, well, why don't you just use the formula, which is n times n plus 1 divided by 2, where if n is 4, then this will be 4 times 5, that's 20, divided by 2, and that also gives you 10. Well, you can use this if you want to, but the purpose of this video is to practice using a for loop and using recursion. Let's go over the code for our sum function, and we're going to use a for loop first, and then we're going to write it in recursion later. So we have define sum iterative, so using a for loop, and we pass in the number n. So we have our total. So our total is equal to 0, and for i in range from 1 to n plus 1, or this means from 1 to n inclusively, then we add it to our total, and then we just simply return the total. Let's test it. As you can see, it prints out 10. This means that our for loop is correct. Now let's go ahead and do it in recursion. The first step to writing recursion is to use the recursion tree. And let me show you how to do it. We need to tell the computer to start at 1, and we also need to tell the computer on how to keep track of the total sum. All we have to do is add extra parameters. So this sum will call another function, sum2, and we're going to tell the computer to start at number 1, number 4 stays the same, and we're also going to keep track of the total sum. And we're going to start at 0, and you'll see why in a second. This is going to call on itself, and we have sum2. Now this number 1 gets incremented, so we get number 2, Number four stays the same. And how about this one? Well, zero plus one gives you one. So we're gonna put number one here. We will do the same again. We have sum. This number becomes number three. Number four stays the same. And how about this one? Well, one plus two gives you three. So we put number three right there. This becomes number 4, over here this is number 4 as well, and as for this number, 3 plus 3 gives you 6, so this is 6. Finally, the first parameter becomes 5, the second one always stays the same, and the last one is 6 plus 4, which is 10. And at this point, we can see that this number is larger than this number which means we have to stop and return the total sum that we found, which is number 10. So this whole thing right here will be 10 because that's the last number. So we have 10 that's going to move up the recursion tree into this one. This one's also going to be 10. We put it back to this one, then this one is 10. And we're going to keep going up the recursion tree, that's 10. This one is also 10. And finally, the sum will produce number 10. We're going to define our sum, and we pass in number n. And this time, we need to call sum2. So sum2, 1, n, and 0. Basically, we're telling the computer to start at 1, and the 0 will keep track of the total, OK? We also define sum2. So define sum2. And we pass in i, n, and the total. So the base case is when i is larger than n, we exit. So if i is larger than n, then we return whatever the value of total is. Else, we plus i with the total. So total plus equals i. We increment i by 1. And then we return sum 2. We shall test it. So this one should print 10, and this one should print 5050. And as you can see, it produces the correct output, which means that our program is correct. 
And that is basically it for today. I hope you enjoy it. If you did, make sure to click that like button. And if you also want to buy me a coffee for free, please smash that subscribe button. In the next video, we will talk about how to print the content of an array or a list using recursion.